What is up, everybody? Welcome into episode 32 of the Brahma Bullpen. We're out here in the cow pasture on behalf of the United Football Media Group, recording our second episode of the week. This episode is specifically to preview the game coming up against the Showboats this Saturday. And we have a very, very, very special guest joining our show. Uh, through the magic of producing producing in the uh, interwebs, right? So with all that, let's just get right into it. Welcome into episode 32 here in the Cow Pasture. First thing we're going to look at is the rankings, the standings. Yes, that is correct. We've had a week of games. Uh, if you caught episode 30, you know that the Brahmas won the game, uh, were the best team on the field last Sunday. But we got standing. So XFL, the only XFL team to win this past weekend were the Brahmas. And, of course, we are ranked first uh, in the UFL standings for the XFL conference, uh, with St. Louis being second, Arlington being third, and D.C. being ranked fourth. Yes, you heard that correct. The team that went 91 in the regular season last year are ranked fourth in our conference. Uh, why is there a – they went ranked fourth, even though they're 0-1, uh, as well as Arlington being 0-1 and St. Louis being 0-1? Uh, the first tiebreaker – for the league is points scored and Arlington and DC uh, only scored 12 points. Uh, and then the next tiebreaker is, uh, you know what? I don't know what the next tiebreaker is. I just like the DC being on the bottom. How about that? Uh, if somebody wants to look up what that second tiebreaker is, I don't know, but this is the way the league has them seated uh, down in the USFL where almost everybody won 75% of the teams in the XFL won, only 25% in the Brahmas quick Cal Patcher Matt. Remember, our math is never wrong here in the Cal Pasture. Uh, Birmingham Stallions, first. Memphis Showboats, second. Michigan Panthers, third. And Houston Gam Gamble next, Rough next, fourth. Uh, and like I said, that's also points scored. That's the tiebreaker there. Uh, points scored is the tiebreaker. Uh, so don't come at me, Showboats and Panthers, because uh, I don't put on their tie for first. These are the rankings off of the UFL.com's website and who is surprised the San Antonio and Birmingham Stallions are top? You know who is? Everybody except for the bullpen. We called it. We knew it was going to happen. We knew that this was not your daddy San Antonio Brahmas. Wade Phillips, A.J. Smith, uh, Coach Reed, all those guys came down here, did what they had to do, get these boys ready. Our old line defense, wide receivers are best in the league. Let's go, Brahmas. Enough about the Brahmas. Let's talk about the Memphis freaking showboats. Here we go, Memphis showboats. We're going to start off by watching the video. Producer, roll the video of my friend, the captain, uh, part of the United Football Media Group, who hosts uh, the Memphis Showboat Show here on the channel, my boy Brandon. Awesome dude. Follow him on Twitter. But uh, roll the video. Well, well, well. You're lucky I can't be there live, Bucky. Okay, buddy, bucko, pal, old buddy, old friend. Listen, I love, I love what the bullpen does. I love S.A. Brahma bullpen. Old Josh and Dustin over there doing it in the cow pasture. They put out a great show. You would never suspect it's in the cow pasture. Uh, they root for a hell of a team, the San Antonio Brahmas that put on a show this past week. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit scared. Who said that? Who said that? I didn't say that. It's all boats all this week, baby. Let me tell you about it. A couple showboats players to watch, Case Cookus, all right? Better known as the chef, because the boy, all he does is cook up excellence in the passing game. Also in the run game, too. Better be on your P's and Q's, because Case Cookus can get loose on you and tear some stuff up. All right. He's a mobile quarterback, sneaky athletic. All right. The dude is willing to stand in the pocket and deliver a ball. Even if he's got three defenders bearing down on him, which I know you guys do. You guys have good defenders over in the bullpen. The Brahmas are a very tough team. But the showboat's defense is going to put a stop to that Brahmas. A.J. Smith, Mike Leach, Air Ray, shots explosives offense all right i saw that offense i saw them play the defenders 
I picked the defenders just like everybody else in the world did. I did not think the Brahmas were going to do anything about nothing. I was sleeping on them. That's right. I was sleeping on them. Just like Vegas, who had you guys at plus 1,300, I was asleep too. But I'm wide awake, and I've seen what this defense can do against an okay offense in the Houston Roughnecks. So now I'll be even more excited to see what they can do against you guys and your very good offense. I was going to say elite there, but that'd be giving you too much credit. So a couple things to watch on the defense. We got a man named Kyrie Woods playing uh, in the secondary out there. He was the number one graded player in the whole USFL last year by PFF, 92.0 PFF grade. Absolute stud out there in the secondary, always Roman. Had a forced fumble for us this week uh, that turned into a scoop and score touchdown. A couple guys on the D-line. Greg Reeves, okay, watch out for him. Had a strip sack this weekend. Uh, Another turnover machine kind of guy. Watch out for TJ Neal, all right, linebacker that's going to be roaming around the middle uh, alongside a man named Vontae Diggs, okay, ever heard of him? You will, okay, because he likes to talk. He likes to get this defense fired up. So watch out for that showboat's front seven. The secondary ain't nothing to sleep on. Special teams, we all right. We all right. All right. We have a kicker that we send out there to kick some field goals. I'll tell you that. It looks like you guys don't have a kicker that you trust to kick any field goals. Brahmas are just going to go for it on fourth down every time because destroying can't kick no field goals. Now watch him go kick three of them this week and maybe win the game. But that's not how it's going to happen. It's going to be showboats 24, Brahmas 20. That's your final score. Showboats win. You're coming to our house, to the Yacht Club, to the Liberty Bowl. You're not leaving there with a W, okay? I'm out. Next time we'll have to do this live and in person so I can see your reaction to this nonsense that you think I'm spitting. Thank you, Bullpen. Carry on. So first of all, Bullpen, let me just apologize for the ridiculousness uh, the captain just spewed across our channel here. I do apologize. Um, one, implying that the kicker on the Brahmas team that won the starting job in camp outright can't kick. And and then I'll ask you, we went three for four on fourth down, and every one of them were situationally based. And I think that any coach that had was worth his weight, so to speak, or had the riverboat gambler in him, you call yourself the showboat, you ain't got no riverboat in you, uh, you, you know, Wade Phillips strategically went for it on fourth down. It was not hiding our kicker. But let's start back over at the top. Right away, you can see the captain already recognizing uh, the Brahma's defense. He even said he was a little scared. He, you know, he, he implied it a little bit. Uh, I will tell you that the Boats defense is stout. We'll go over some of the stats here in the when we do the that's the stats statistical breakdown here in a minute um he said to watch out for case cook is cook cook is gonna cook yada 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 uh he's gonna cook about a 57 percent completion ratio because that's what he was in game one how nice is it that we now have game one stats and we actually can start uh building a pattern for these players you know that you know what the old saying is if it happens once it's a coincidence if it happens three times it's a pattern so right now it's a coincidence that case cook is Completion percentage was 57%. I'll also tell you that he's going to have to do better because he's going up against a better defense uh, when they play the Brahmas. We'll go over stats to prove that. I'm not just talking out of the cow pasture. You know what I'm saying? We got stats to back it up. Um, He's like our defense front seven. Thank you for the complimentary things there. Um, It's the – I don't know. He's saying that he's thinking the Memphis defense is going to stop the – Brahma's offense, I am not real sure because I think the Brahma's offense adjusts each and every play based upon what the defense does. As we've uh, seen, uh, if the linebacker goes this way, the wide receivers go that way, and this route's ran that way, and I know that most offenses are very complicated like that, but our offenses are spread out. We have talent. Jaronte Kirkland's got the shakes. Uh, Justin Smith's got the speed. And don't even get me started, any one of our running backs, especially when we're coming out of the backfield. Uh, If you guys want to you know, play cover two. That's all right. We'll bubble pass you guys to death. We'll bubble pass all the way to the championship. We don't care. 
Uh, our defense is so, I mean, our offense is so flexible. It doesn't matter what their defense does. We'll, we'll find the A.J. Smith with his virtual reality uh, headsets will find the holes in your defense. Um, I believe our offense has a chance to be elite. He did mention that our offense was good, but not he, he didn't want to use the word elite and pump us up too big. I would say elite's too strong of a word right now. But, uh, you know, St. Louis actually is the highest graded PFF grade offense in the league. Uh, after week one, and they and they lost, so uh, let that sink in. So it, it's it's a double facet game. You need all oh, three facets. You need your offense, your defense, and your special teams to execute in order to win these games. Um, we need to watch out for the secondary. They said Woods, he's a ball hawk back there, and uh, you know, and Greg Reed's the DL guy. He strip sack last week, so we'll get us on the quarterback. We'll see uh, how our O line holds up there, but I mean. We got some all stars on our old line. I mean, these guys even catch touchdown passes. I mean, you know, you never know what's going to happen. The uh, uh, kicker has a weak spot. I did notice that he went two for three on field goals. Uh, the Memphis kicker went two for three on field goals in week one. I don't know if that's necessarily a weakness, you know, uh, opening week in Jenners, but, you know, it's going to be a great game. Let's dig into some of the stats and uh, see what we think about that. So, overall, PFF score uh, for the teams. Uh, after week one was Memphis were ranked fourth. San Antonio was ranked third. You can see the PFF score. We scored a 72.8. That's offense, defense, special teams combined, you know, uh, score. The only team that scored higher than San Antonio was uh, uh, Birmingham and St. Louis. And it wasn't by much. Uh, and then uh, Memphis was fourth at 65.1. Uh, we scored 27 points, gave up 12. They scored 18, gave up 12. You can see a little bit. Uh, better execution out of our offense there's uh go to the completion percentage we kind of uh alluded to this earlier chase garbers was uh it rounded up to 76 percent it was like 75.8 or 75.7 percent uh completion percentage for uh case cookers was 57 percent you can see how chase garbers took this offense on made it his own what is what is a 75 percent completion uh percentage tell you it tells you he's going the right direction with the ball making it to where he, he's not thrown into coverage he's not putting the ball in danger it, it does point to the fact that our running backs and receivers everybody who completed passes to have great hands that's the way aj built his team do you have hands are you fast can you run routes you can play for me that's the thing that they're going for so that completes percentage i don't expect to see 75 percent all year but 65 percent and up I think that's a no-brainer for our offense. Uh, look at our uh, passing yards, 158 to 204. I will say, if you add the 40 passing yards by our punter, that number goes up to uh, 198 and puts us right on par there. But uh, we didn't want to pad our stats by having our punter's passing yards in that stat there. Um, you know, I mean, that was a touchdown pass. Anyways, uh, rushing yards, we had 76. They had 34. We actually uh, were one of the top teams in rushing this past season we had a 3.3 average yards per rush that does not dictate what McFarland did McFarland's average 5.2 yards per carry those rushing yards factor in Lovett's rushes as well as uh our uh, Gaber's rushes uh so the team was 3.3 yards per attempt but our running back was 5.2 which is great we'll take that all day uh our defense was awesome but so was Memphis's defense. Memphis's defense had a PFF score of 80. Ours was 78.5. Uh, very close, very comparable. Uh, we might need to, uh, you know, the, they said we were playing the best defense in the league when we went up against D.C. I do think D.C.'s defense was is a great defense. I do not think that uh, they were inferior in any way. Their D-line was stout. Their secondary was stout. I just think our offense was able to take advantage of uh, certain situations uh, to benefit us. And I do think that fake play, that fake field goal going into halftime was big in us uh, being able to maintain that league. And then, then, of course, they messed up on their own, right? So uh, I think we did play good defense. So we're going to play another good defense in Memphis. Uh, if anybody thought that the Memphis team was going to be a pushover, you know, Memphis and San Antonio were the – well, in Michigan. But Memphis, Michigan, and San Antonio were all the three teams that people kind of uh, were sleeping on, I think, in the offseason. And uh, I definitely was looking forward to just being more of an offensive team. But as you can see after week one, maybe they're going to wind up being a defensive team. You know, Case Cook is supposed to be 
the GOAT uh, spring football quarterbacks. But, uh, you know, we'll see, right? Is it Every team has uh, personalities that come out throughout the season, and we'll see what Memphis winds up being. Uh, and they'll build that based upon what we do here week two. Uh, tackles and sacks. The Brahmas did Brahmas things. 38 tackles, for, uh, five sacks. Um, I will point out that Jordan Williams, double-digit tackles, as always. If anybody was wondering why he was the number one tackler in the league uh, for the XFL last year, 10 tackles in game one. Uh, Delonte Scott getting his sacks up in there. Ray getting sacks up in there. So we have five sacks on the uh, – the Boats had 26 and four, so they got their four sacks. Also, going to the next stat, uh, you know, our secondary was probably a question. We didn't know who was going to do what and all that. Y'all saw we got that pick return for 88 yards. But here's a stat off of pff.com. If you can see on the bottom of the graphic there, all these stats are coming off pff.com. Um, we allowed 63% of the passes to be completed against us. Uh, to compare that to Memphis show bolts where 84% of the passes were completed against them. I don't know if that bolts so well for Memphis with the passing offense, like the Brahmas coming in uh, to week two. So we'll see how that goes. All these stats are kind of leaning towards the Brahmas, but the Memphis show bolts are not going to be a pushover. We're going to have to go in there next week. We're on the road. You know, when you come down the Vegas score and predictions and over and unders and all that stuff, there's always a two to three point, benefit for playing at home and Memphis is going to be playing at home first game ever I believe in a home stadium I don't know if they played there last year but we're going to the Liberty Bowl uh on Saturday the 6th April 6th on Saturday uh let's go ahead and go on to the next slide there we're going to talk a little bit about our score prediction now that we covered some of those stats so we we heard uh, the captain uh say that the boats were going to win and score 20 uh four points I think that's a pretty good uh, score estimate. But I think the Brahmas are going to get the win. I think the Boats are going to score 23 points. I think the Brahma score is going to be right around that 30-point mark, maybe 28-30. Eh, maybe I gave them 30 just to kind of poke the bear a little bit. I don't know. Um, but what I think is going to be critical is we had game one under, the, under our belts. We have another week of practice in A.J. Smith's offense. We saw how Chris – our offense was we came out just hitting an all cylinders in the first quarter only offense to do that uh we tied birmingham for scoring the most points uh in one but birmingham got going in the second half they started very slow brahmas came out firing all send on all cylinders right off the get-go uh i think it's credit to dc's defense that we didn't break the 30 mark to be perfectly honest with you and i think dc's defense is probably a little bit better than memphis so i think we can get to that 30 mark uh, our offense rank a 61.7. We had the highest rated rushing attack in the league, uh, number one in the league, 76.6. So that shows that we can run the ball, we can throw the ball. So we got everything covered that we need to have on offense. And we're going to go up into Memphis. My prediction is a 30 to 23 score. In Memphis, we're going to watch the game on ESPN noon. This Saturday, let's go. With all that said, what a great episode. Uh, we do want to kind of do our giveaway. We gave away tickets to game one. Uh, we we're giving away tickets already to the third game against St. Louis. Uh, we got the Michigan Panthers tickets given away. So now we are down to week eight, which would be the fourth home game of the season. Week eight, we got Arlington coming to the Alamo Dome. Sunday, May 19th, 4 p.m. on Fox. Sunday, May 19th, 4 p.m. in the Alamo Dome. Renegades come to San Antonio. Comment on this video. Comment anything. Tell me my prediction was dumb. Tell me the Cats' prediction was awesome. Tell me you hate the Brahmas. Tell, them, tell me you hate me. Tell me to get a haircut. I don't know. Tell me to change my background. I don't know. Tell me my camera sucks. Whatever. Comment on the video for a chance to win tickets to week eight there's only going to be one more chance after that because we only have five home games so with that being said let's go Brahmas. be respectful for the bulks let's hope for a nice quarter week we don't want the same thing happening with memphis to happen with dc as always let's go Brahmas, baby horns forward <laughs>